This is another Ask Whitetail Instinct video, and in this video, we're touching on our editing software that we use, scent control, and turkey hunting. that we made a map scouting video. I think it was either the last one Ask White Telling video we did or one before that. We've got a couple maps. So for you guys that sent those maps in, we haven't forgot about you. We're doing them. We're getting to them here coming up. So keep sending in your questions because we have a bunch we're going to get to here today and we'll just keep making these videos. And like we said, with the maps, we're getting to your map scouting videos and we'll get those up soon. Yep. Same with the questions. We had a whole list of questions. So we're just working our way through all the questions you guys have sent in and the maps as well. So usually we get your maps, we'll send you an email back so you know we got them. Yep. And then it's just a matter of us working through them and then getting the video put up. So yep. we have them, we're going to get to them. It just takes a little bit of time. Yep. So we'll start. Uh, Hunting Farmer asked, if you had to choose, do you prefer early season or late season hunting on public land and why? I think uh, I said early season because there's less pressure and you got the food sources that you can kind of use. Plus you think you can use your uh, off season scouting a little bit better once you're in there, like during the summer or something like that, you know, right where they're bedding and you can move in right away. So I think I responded back with early season, but I wonder what yours is. Yeah, a lot of the early season stuff is a lot of the people aren't out there hunting yet. So like and they said, haven't been. If you can go out there and scout and you find with the DR, you do some velvet scouting, some stuff in August, usually you can get on those bucks pretty early if you're doing your scouting mm -hmm. and no one's been pressuring them. Yeah. Usually here in Nebraska, season opens September 1st. We usually have like a whole month before anybody else even gets out there with us at all mm -hmm. to go hunt. So that's why the early season is pretty good. And the late season a lot of times is good if you can find where the bucks are. Yeah. Because we've had up and down late seasons the last couple of years, but just depended on if we were finding where the bucks wanted to be that year or if we didn't mm -hmm. if you can't find them and you're in searching it can be tough it's tough and it sucks but if you're on the box you're like okay this is where they want to be you can go back every night and they're all there mm -hmm. so it just kind of depends for late season some years the late season is like really good and we like that better and some seasons late seasons mm -hmm. like this year was tough just finding the bucks we're hunting new properties and um, we did better early season yeah. seeing deer, but we yeah. did a lot of, like I said, off-season scouting. If you have trail cameras, you've run them through the summer, so you have a good idea where those deer are at. And you can use a lot of that, like we said, off-season information to make moves right away, and especially on public land with less people. Yeah. The only problem with early season is, like, a lot of times it's the getting in and the out because you sweat a lot. There's bugs it's warm. and there's water. <laughs> We're usually crossing water. Mm -hmm. In the late season, you can walk wherever you want on the ice, and it's cold. But it's cold. And you can, yeah, and it's cold, <laughs> and it snows, but you can get in. So. Yep. I guess if I had to choose only early season or late season, I don't know, that one's tough too. I'd probably go early season. If we're talking like September 1st to October 15th, yeah. I, that's where I'm going as opposed to like December, December 1st, 1st yeah. to January 15th. Probably. I guess our opinion is early season is where we're going to go. If we had to choose one. Yep. And then Huck with Released Outdoors wanted to know if we'll be doing any turkey hunting this spring. Yes, we will. It's coming up here soon. We're actually going to post, it might already be up, at least one of them when you're watching this video, a couple turkey hunts from last year that most of you guys didn't see because you weren't subscribed yet. We only had a few subscribers at the time during last year's turkey season. So we're gonna run Chance's Kill and our Dad's Kill from last year that you can watch leading up to the start of our season here in Nebraska. But just, yes, turkey hunting. Just to kind of get you ready and get you pumped for turkey season and get us ready. It's like a week away, just a eight days away yeah. when we can start hunting turkeys here in Nebraska. If we can ever get down any of the roads, but uh, so, yes, we're going to be doing lots of turkey hunting, yep. starting with bows for a month here or so, at least three, four weeks, and then going into shotgun yep. after that. Got a bunch of new properties to hunt and a, some properties we've hunted before. So yep. we're going to be going all over to those different pieces of public land where we've hunted before and new pieces yep. hunting turkey. So, so if, you're watch, if you're watching this and you haven't saw those two hunts from last year, check those out too because they're pretty cool. Julius Villarreal wanted to know, how do we think this hard weather is going to affect this upcoming deer season? And it kind of preface that when he sent this question in and even like it is now we've got tons of flooding here in nebraska mm -hmm. so that'll affect deer up in the northeast part of the state the western part of the state just got hit with 12 inches of snow and we actually just got all the snow melted and it's march mm -hmm. 17. And i know places like wisconsin's having flooding iowa's having some flooding and we've all had a really harsh winter so he just wanted to know how that sort of weather would affect the upcoming deer season mm -hmm. and i i guess i didn't know i don't know too much about the science so i don't know how it's going to affect like antler growth and that kind of thing. I know I saw something from Dr. Grant Woods that said he thinks that it will affect uh, bucks antler growth as we go through the season. I thought it'd probably have a bigger effect on just does caring for fawns mm -hmm. or carrying fawns at this time, trying to find yeah. food. Because I know when we were out scouting, like there was nothing for the deer to eat if they weren't going to an ag, 
food source. So yeah. for me, I thought maybe that bigger impact would be on the dough. It's just having to care for fawns and that kind maybe of thing. Maybe only having a single fawn instead of two or losing yeah. the single fawn because they don't have enough to care to eat, for it. Mm-hmm. Or it's just more stressful on the does carrying that fawn with them throughout this mm-hmm. period of the year. So they just haven't had the food. Yeah, I don't and think. bucks are going to be run down from the rut, but they've had a little bit of time to recoup that. Mm-hmm. And then it's just a matter of, like you said, if that's going to affect antler size or anything I'm like not that. not smart enough to figure and that out. <laughs> they're not really growing yet. So I think once it mm-hmm. once the spring hits, as long as spring is good, we don't get snow into May. Mm-hmm. And we should be good as far as antler mm-hmm. growth, I would think. But it's still, I mean, it's definitely... Probably going to have some effect. Effect, yeah, how much, but it's definitely having an effect on the deer. Like, they're feeling it this mm-hmm. this winter because it's been a long winter, tons of precipitation. Yep. and So they're definitely feeling it, that's for sure. Yep. And for the next question, what type of editing software do we use? And that's from the Pageway. We use uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, which is the whole, like, editing package. And they have, a like, a suite of apps that are within that that do photos and audio and video and premiere pro is the video editing software that we use and we're using adobe edition to record our podcasts we do a lot with photoshop as well and illustrator for our pictures and it takes a little bit just to add a little bit more to the software that we use there's really only a couple editing softwares you can use if you want to be able to overlay audio and put in three different audio tracks and hook it up with a camera like the x70 Mm -hmm. and put in video other, other, over other video and add animation. 4, 4K and, footage and yeah, HD 4K footage. 4K footage, HD footage to do all that. There's really only a couple different ones you can use. Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere Pro are pretty much the yeah. only two different ones Final, you're going to find. Final Cut, a lot of people use that for Mac, I think. But you can use Premiere yeah. Pro for Mac as well. But So it just kind of depends what you want to use it for. I'm sure there's cheaper ones or simple ones if you just want to go out, film your stuff and just make a quick video. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking to do TV stuff or YouTube stuff and you wanna, you're want to, you going to need to cut and overlay stuff, Adobe Premiere Pro, Pro or Final Cut are probably what you want to use. Mm-hmm. But we use Premiere Pro. And I'm not going to lie, it takes a little bit of getting used to. You have to spend some time doing it, mm-hmm. Googling some things to figure it out. It's not the simplest thing to use, but once you get it, then it's simple, if yeah. that makes sense. I'd like, it takes a long time to learn it, but once you learn it, now you can move through yeah. it and edit something really I'd quick. recommend uh, Premiere Pro as your editing software if you're looking to get something. I'm not sure on the price, but it is a little bit expensive. It, yes. We got it, luckily, free through our college when we were in college, so we can use it now. But it is kind of expensive. So, I mean, if you're looking for a cheap option, it's probably not necessarily the cheapest version that you can get, but I would recommend using it if you're looking to buy something. And do we have time for one more? Yeah. Okay, we got time for one more, and this is from Jay Hansen. He wanted to know, what do we do as far as scent control other than wind direction, sprays, soaps, laundry, vehicle scents, going hunting straight from work, anything like that? Mm -hmm. We really don't do much for scent control. We did a little bit, cut on just some sprays real quick, a few years back, but when I went out with the hunting public guys, I had so many, like, encounters with deer and bucks, hunting with them, not doing any of it that I saw firsthand that you really don't need it if you play the wind. So our scent control is the wind. Yeah, so we don't, like you said, we don't do anything. And really, we probably still would if it wasn't for the hunting public guys. Mm-hmm. Like, they just flat out prove if you play the wind right and you access right and you're dropping that milkweed, yep. you don't need the scent control because he's not going to smell you because the wind's not blowing mm-hmm. it to him. Yeah, and like everybody's going to get busted. We get winded all the time. Guys at the hunting public get winded. I mean, everybody that hunts, you're going to get busted through your scent because you can't eliminate all of it. They've done studies where no. do- like dogs have tracked people yep. and stuff like that. Like the deer are going to smell you, but we play the wind when we're going and doing our hanging hunts, and that's our scent control. So we don't wash our clothes. It sits downstairs or in our rooms or yep. in a bag. Like we don't do scent control. It's purely the wind. And you shot that buck. Dad shot that buck. I mean, yep. and you've seen the bucks that we've seen that came in, the smell us, kept going. Yep. So, I mean, people are going to say, well, you, maybe you would have shot some of these if you mm-hmm. were in scent control. Well, I don't know if a lot of time they smelled us or they seen us or they just walked on the wrong trail. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you can't always set up because maybe you're expecting them to come from this way. So you got your wind blowing like this and they walk behind you. So, yep. I mean, you can't always set up perfectly. Yep. For But even your scent control products, they have a smell, mm-hmm. like not to you. But to that deer who's got way more way of that stuff, smell. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's and nothing then, you can, as soon as you get in your truck, smell. Yeah. And we're not saying that those don't work. I mean, they probably do help, help eliminate yeah. some of your scent. So, I mean, if you want to use them, go ahead. We've chosen not to use them. We just feel, in our opinion, that the advantage we're getting from using them really doesn't outweigh or feel like we should use yeah. it when we go hunting. Yeah. So we don't use it. Scent control. Play the wind. Make sure you're accessing mm-hmm. right. Make sure you're setting your stands appropriately for where the deer are going to be coming from. 
And yeah, the I think, majority of the time, you'll be fine. I think like what Chancellor said, that's the most important part is playing the wind, accessing right, and knowing what the wind's doing when you're in your stand. Because just because you put scent control spray on doesn't mean you can hunt a food plot wind, with your yeah. wind blowing right out into the field anyway. So you still have to play the wind. So we just feel like we'll just take our chances and play the wind. Yep. So that'll wrap it up for this Ask Whitetail Instinct video. Again, we're getting to all you guys' maps. Thanks for sending them in. Yep. Keep sending them in. Uh, keep sending in the questions, uh, dropping them in the comments on our Facebook page, on Instagram, all that. We love answering them and going through them and answering you guys' specific questions. So thanks for watching this Ask Whitetail Instinct video. Peace.